Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, the church does celebrate the 10th Sunday after Trinity, and I am basing my sermon upon the gospel appointed for today, coming to us from the 19th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, which I will read to you right now. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even though, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast them out that held that, that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, my house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ. As we hear in St. Luke's Gospel, here in the 19th chapter, St. Luke is describing to us, and bear in mind what I read to you began in verse 41 of this 19th chapter, but prior to that, if you read through this 19th chapter, you will soon find that our Lord and his disciples are traveling from Bethany going towards Jerusalem. And just shortly before this, 41st verse that I started reading from in verse 38 as our Lord is traveling towards Jerusalem as he's going towards the great city the disciples that are along the way they catch sight of our blessed Savior and it says in verse 38 they yell out and they scream at the top of their lungs at our blessed Lord blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And so as our blessed Savior is traveling, and if you will, it's, it's almost as if he's picking up momentum. Because as he's traveling along from Bethany, on the road from Bethany to Jerusalem, as I stated, is picking up momentum in terms of disciples are gathering sight of him. People along the way are hearing the commotion that's going on. And the momentum going towards Jerusalem is so great because the people are yelling, Glory, glory, blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. And in the midst of this great splendor, because if you try to visualize it in your mind's eye, as you read along the gospel, as you visualize in your mind's eye, you can see the great splendor of this going on around our blessed Savior. But despite all this grandeur and splendor and proclaim, and accolades coming from the disciples. What do we hear in verse 41? And as he drew near, meaning our blessed Lord, and as he drew near, he beheld the city, and he wept over it. As I stated, dear friends, in the midst of all this acclaim and all this proclaim glory to God in the highest, 
Blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. As all this is going on around our blessed Lord, our blessed Lord weeps over the great city as he beholds it, as he comes close, as he comes near. He weeps over it. And the word that is used, dear friends, in Scripture, we must not make the mistake of when we hear the words, he wept. We must not mistake it, dear friends, for just merely teardrops flowing from our blessed Lord's eyes, going down his face. Rather, the word that is used is he's, he wept meaning he wailed out in pain. He had a bitter outburst, if you will, of weeping. His chest was heaving as he could not keep back the sorrow, as he could not keep back the lament, as he could not keep back the pain that was within him as he beheld the city. And as St. Luke, again, describes for us, our Lord described the lament that he was feeling in his heart, in his soul, in his very being. And he says again, If thou hadst known, our Lord says, If thou hadst known, even now, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. What our Lord is saying, dear friends, is that if you had only known what I came to offer you, if you had only known what I brought with me for you, for your benefit, for your peace, if you had only taken the time to notice. For the day shall come upon thee, our Lord predicted. For the days that come up shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee. Of course, what our blessed Lord is referring to is when Jerusalem was leveled to the ground by the Roman general Titus in the year 70 A.D. And this word trench that we hear, trench to our modern hearing, to our modern way of thinking, we think of a, digging a trench, like a pit or a hole on the ground. It's a trench. But rather in this original word would have meant that it was a great, if you will, a, 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 a great earthen things, whether they be stones or wood or earth itself, was thrown up onto the ground. So it was almost like a barrier around the city. And this is why our Lord predicted, he said, you shall be entrenched, entrenched. In other words, you shall be trapped in. And this is exactly what the meaning was what Titus exactly wanted to do because he wanted to trap the city, the great city, in on every side so that they could not flee and they could not escape. And then when they were at their lowest, the city was leveled to the ground. You see, dear friends, our Lord, as he prophesied here, as he predicted this, as he foresaw this, however you want to phrase it, yes, he wept bitterly. But yet I dare say that our Lord wept bitterly at the many souls throughout history from the time of Adam and Eve to the end of time, he was able to see the souls that would be lost because they did not take the time to consider 
our Lord's offer of salvation. Because you see, dear friends, there were so many and there are so many people again today that are too busy, caught up in the ways of the world. They're too busy and they're too caught up, you see, thinking about how they can get their pleasure today, right now. How they can get their money and their riches and that's all they think about. We, dear friends, are called to think about eternity. We are called to think about eternity and where we will spend it. Our Lord offers the free gift of salvation. It is up to us to grab on and to accept it. It's up to us. Our Lord, you see, paid the price. Our Lord is the one who hang, hung on the cross to save us, to save you and to save me from our sins. But for our part, we must say yes. We must say yes and do our best. I emphasize do our best because none of us are perfect. In our humanity, we will fail. But our Lord realizes that. Our Lord understands that. That is why our Heavenly Father sent His only Son into the world to save us from our sins because He knew in our human imperfections we could not do it ourselves. And so our Lord wept bitterly, knowing that countless souls would not take advantage of this offer. So this day, dear friends, as we think about this 19th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, let us again weep bitterly, yes. Weep bitterly for our sins and weep bitterly for the times in which we failed our blessed Savior. But also weep weep tears of joy knowing that our blessed Lord loves us so much that he was willing to die on the cross willing to die on the cross and to be laid out in the tomb so that he could be raised on the third day so that he could himself defeat death and allow us to share in eternal life with him but we first must say yes to following him. <laughs>